everybody, what's going on? We're here in some King Arthur. Let's talk about the main champs I've been using to progress because I am I'm enjoying the difficulty scaling in this game, but it is there. You will you will hit some walls as you go, particularly in the story. There will be fights in the story that I reckon unless you just get so far leveled beyond, which would be very tedious, you are going to need to to manual them to a degree. There, there's a couple of fights where like one of the shark guys keeps summoning extra shark guys. And if you don't get rid of the shark guy that's summoning, it's just you're going to end up in a much tougher battle than if you just get rid of him first. A couple of the boss fights require you to pay a little bit of attention. So if you've hit a fight that you're losing on auto, it's worth jumping in on manual just to see if maybe if you manual it, you can get through it. Also, I've noticed that the AI is kind of all over the place. And one, one of the things that seems really helpful in this game is picking an opponent and getting them out. The, 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 you seem to be much stronger with numbers, more so than some other games, because a lot of games are like very AOE heavy. And champs in this game are generally a lot tankier. It's, it's a lot harder to one shot somebody, at least at this point in the game. So numbers seem to be very important. So if you start a fight and pick an enemy and get them out of there and dwindle them down one by one, rather than trying to knock them out AOE, you'll also find some success. So there's some like real quick, like gameplay tangible mechanics for that. But let's talk about the main champs I've been using as I've been progressing. Uh, we have been using Morgan a lot. Uh, I, I, I do like her a lot. We just got her five star. We've gotten a few, a few champs five star. Believe it or not, Luke was my first five star. <laughs> um, Luke might have been my first, and Jarrett might have been my second. I'm really liking this champ. He's, he's been really fun to use, but our main ones for campaign progression have been Morgan, Arthur, Luke, and I'll occasionally make some swaps, but I've decided I'm going to go ahead and lean into Tristan. As I get some better gear on him and get some more levels in him, I'm starting to be a little bit more impressed. I think I said in my last video, I was feeling a little underwhelmed by him. I, I think he just needed a little bit more love from me. He needed to get caught up a little bit. So uh, I've decided to, to invest in Tristan as well. Uh, Kay is also very good. And at times she's a great swap in, but Tristan's solid. Uh, th there's also some other really cool champs down here and we'll talk about them at some point. But as far as campaign pro progression goes, it's really these four that I've been using. And you, the game gives you all of these. You, you literally, you don't even have to summon any of these. I think they just give them to you outright. You start with Arthur, Morgan you get from your first 10 pop, uh, Tristan you get from the story, and then Luke you might get from your first set of summons, or maybe the game just gives you him as well. So you've literally got everybody you need straight out of the gate to continue through the campaign. As far as, as how far I've made it into the campaign, I'm currently in chapter eight. I'm up to eight, six. And, uh, Again, it's tough. I, I'm, it's, I'm, at the, I'm at the point where like every little improvement matters. And I did I did go back recently and get all the three stars that I could. I would highly recommend that you do that if you've been skipping that. I've been much more concerned with moving forward than like clearing everything as I go, which is a little bit abnormal for me. I, I tend to be more concerned with getting the three stars as I go. But anyway, let's talk about the gear on these champs. You will be making changes to your gear periodically which again is a little bit annoying and a little tedious, but it is gonna be necessary. You're gonna start off with very crappy one-star, two-star gear, and you're gonna slowly start to accumulate some very crappy two-star, three-star gear. So I'm gonna talk about how I've geared my champs and then give you a couple tips on how to get some better gear easier, okay? So Morgan, I'm trying a few different things on her. I initially started out with a tankier build on her. I was giving her like effect accuracy and uh, an HP and stuff. I wanted to switch it up and see how I felt about her in damage. So, we, so right now we've got her in two attack sets and a crit set. I'm still not entirely sure how I feel about it, but that's that's kind of what we're trying with her now instead of the tankiness. I, I originally went with tankiness and accuracy because I just thought I'd rather her be around longer and you know knocking back turn meters, putting up heal block, putting up sleeps. Uh, and and not be, not be so concerned with her damage. She is doing decent damage as well. So I don't know. I feel like she might be one you could do, you could go a few different ways with. But that's what we're doing with her. I don't know that we're really even in a place to to talk specifically about looking for substats. I'm still doing it because it's a habit. So like this is a decent piece for her because it's got these substats. Um, 
Still trying to learn like what all the main stats are on each piece. The the rings seem to be all the flat base stats plus attack speed. The earrings, best I can tell, are just your typical flat main stats. And then the amulet, I believe, is the same. I think the, I think the only deviation in main stats comes with the ring. And then if I'm not mistaken, the helmet is always attack. The armor is always defense. And the boots will always be HP. So again, maybe maybe I just don't have enough gear yet to know that these also have deviations on their main stat. But from what I've seen, the ring is the only one that has the possibility of that. And you can get attack speed on it, which is probably going to be pretty important to do on just about everybody, right? I don't know if that's true yet, but I assume <laughs> uh, in my time playing these games. But anyway, that, that's how we built Morgan. For Tristan, I, I did want to go attack speed on him as much as possible because he's got some mechanics that, that scale off of his speed. So we did put him in a speed set, and then I've got him in double crit. I, I really am trying to ramp his damage up. Um, You know, we, we didn't have attack speed. I don't think we had attack speed on a crit ring as a main stat. Anyway, maybe, maybe we've picked one up. We have picked one up. All right, we'll give him that. There you go. So that's how that's how we've geared him. Arthur, I'm just trying to go pure damage. So we've got two attack sets and, and a crit set. And we, I mean, you know, again, the subsets are so minor. But when, when you can, <laughs> match up the appropriate subset, right? And then Luke, speed and HP is, is, is my concern on him. I want him fast. And I want him with high HP so that his heal scales higher, right? 11% of his max HP. So the higher we get his HP, the better he heals. So that's that's really as straightforward as we get with him. And then again, I've got to get some gear on a couple of other champs. But what I'll do periodically, even though it is a little bit gold cost. I mean, it's not super cost. I think it costs like a... a the most I've seen it cost me to take all my gear off someone is a thousand. It would, it would cost 1200 to take this off of him. When I realize I've got a lot of new gear, I will go through my entire roster and pull all their gear off. And then I'll then I'll prioritize my champs and I'll re-gear them. So yeah, I'm spending a little gold, which isn't great because gold is bottleneck and hard already. Um, so in that sense, it's annoying. But in the other sense, it is very important that you get gear on, on your champs. The, the, the stats are not crazy. So you'll notice if you level someone up a few times or push them to the next star rating, you'll notice that they'll be much more effective than they were. So every little bit matters. This is one of those games where every little bit matters. Whereas in something like Raid, if you get, you know, 2,000 more HP on someone, it's not really a big deal. In this game, if you get 2,000 more HP on someone, at least at this stage, it's a huge deal, right? So... Uh, I would recommend periodically going through stripping your gear off everybody unless you've just managed to nail it the first time. Prioritizing your champs and then gearing them in that order so that your best champs that you're trying to use have the best gear at all times, okay? So that's the team I'm using. That's how they're geared. As far as getting some better gear, obviously, you can come into the gear dungeon if you want to do it that way. This will be very important on a long-term basis. You can get your attack... Uh, crit and speed sets from here and then your more defensive stuff from here they're kind of tough i've cleared stage three on this one and i think maybe two on this one haven't cleared two yet I, I, I bet we could probably jump back in and clear two now it's been a minute since i tried that but uh, these dungeons are tough right and even even if you get in here and clear stage three i now have the possibility of getting three star solid gear but i also have the possibility of getting two star gear and at some point we want to start graduating out of two star gear so uh, alternatively, what you can do if you've leveled up enough is come over to the forge and you'll unlock equipment crafting at, at a certain point. You won't have a ton of resources, so you're going to want to be very careful about getting started in here, okay? You're going to want to be very careful about getting started in here. That That's why I would recommend getting to a certain point where you've done the thing where you've stripped all your champs and then you're looking at your main four or five that you want to build and seeing maybe what you feel like they're missing. So, like, for example... Um, let's use her. These, I crafted these. I didn't, I didn't, these didn't drop from somewhere. I crafted these because I, I geared her up and 
realized I was missing, I didn't have attack boots that I really cared to put on her, right? Same with Luke's weapon. I realized I didn't have another speed piece for him. Same with his amulet. But it's, it's because I realized that for the gear that I had at my disposal, I was lacking a spot that made, I was lacking an amulet that made sense um, based on the gear that I was putting on him. So, so get your champs geared, kind of get a zoomed out view, decide what pieces you think make the most sense for you to upgrade based on the champs that you're using, and then come over to the forge into equipment crafting, pick your set, pick your piece and craft. Now, I don't know, I don't have a lot of data on this because I've only crafted, you know, three or four pieces. However, I have, it says three and four star. Every single piece of gear I crafted was four star. <laughs> I did not craft a, a, a three star piece of gear. So um, again, I'm sure if I did a hundred, it would probably, you know, the, whatever the rates claim to be would probably balance out. But we got fairly lucky and only crafted four star gear. So even if you only craft three star gear though, it's better than the two star gear that you're probably getting from the dungeons at this stage in the game. So uh, don't be afraid to hop in there and start using that, okay? You can do some substat changing on some gear. You're going to have some of the resources to do it. I don't know that I think it's a good idea to do this yet. I think it's probably a better idea to save this for later. I don't know if it's going to cost more on better gear. Like maybe if we put a four star piece in. See, it still only costs one. So if, if, if this costs one of these every single time, regardless of the piece of gear, I think you should absolutely hold on to that. To that currency do not use that on two three four star gear i think you want to save that for later when you're when you start to actually get gear that you're going to be using in the long term okay also check it check your um your purchase equipment tab you know you might be able to get some pretty good stuff in here probably wouldn't be the end of the world for me to buy that you know what screw it let's do it um because you get some good stuff in here as well so you don't have to rely solely on whatever gear is dropping from the campaign as you progress through the game or whatever, whatever you're able to get in the first couple of stages in the equipment dungeon, okay? Because honestly, that's not really going to be that feasible, and there's much better places for you to put your energy right now than the first couple of stages of the gear dungeon. I think you really want to only want to come in here when you can progress to a point where you can justify being in, being in here. You know what I mean? Um, so, but that's the first clear. We get to see... I assume it's the same, right? I assume it's going to be two and three star gear. So you'll want to get a little deeper in there where, where you're at least getting three star minimum. Um, but that's that's it. That's that's just some like quick general tips about progression. I am experimenting with some other champs, as I've said, and I do I'm, I'm finding some interesting things. But as far as like who I would recommend that you invest in, the four that the game gives you have been more than sufficient for me to work my way through this game. As far as the campaign is concerned, I am doing some different things in the restricted area. We'll talk about that in a different video, though. I, I, I do think that the campaign is the most important thing for you to push because as you push it, you unlock more stuff. You get access to different parts of the game and you unlock some pretty good rewards. Uh, at one point, gold was a serious bottleneck for me. I did a little bit more progressing and before I knew it, I had over a million gold. So like the milestones and achievements and all the things that you get for pushing through the actual campaign are going to be very helpful for you as you go. So that that should be a big priority. And that's some some tips on, on how I think you can get through it. If you're hitting a wall on auto, don't be afraid to try to manual it. Pay attention to the mechanics of the enemies. Like I said, there's a shark guy that summons other shark guys. He can be really annoying on auto. Um, certain bosses have certain mechanics that if you just take advantage of, they become very easy. Pick your enemies off one by one. And... Uh, that that's that's really the only like tangible tips that I have as far as gameplay. The rest of it is is how to get gear, which champs to be using, and all that. So uh, we'll wrap this one up here. I'll come back soon with another video for the restricted area. Talk about some champs I'm using in there and how I'm finding the success that I am finding at this stage in the game. Again, we're still very early in it, and we are staying free to play for the foreseeable future. So my progress is going to be a little bit slow. So uh, <laughs> bear with me as we work our way to the mid slash late game um and get more things to work with to make more wide widespread guides for everybody so uh, that's it if you've got any other tips that you want to drop for your progression maybe some champs that people are sleeping on 
any any kind of tips that you have like that, I would be very interested to hear them. And I'm sure other people in the comments would be interested as well. I'm going to go ahead and call this one here. I appreciate you guys watching. I hope it helped and I'll see you soon.